So good morning to everybody. The second part of uh, modern physics, and this is the eighth class. In our previous lecture, we have discussed about the theory of relativity, especially the special theory of relativity of Einstein. Now we will study about the second part of modern physics. So, for this. First of all, we, we, have, we must uh, know about what do we understand from modern physics and how is it different from classical physics. Actually, classical physics uh, developed, uh, developed before 20th century and deals with matter with speed, which is more and more less than speed of light and size also more and more bigger than atom the mass of atom okay it is still valid today but its scope is insufficient for our understanding the nature actually this part can be understand uh, in classical physics mechanics electromagnetism thermodynamics kinetic theory of gases waves and particles conservation principles and fundamental forces atom theory so this part can be explained in classical physics. But in modern physics, uh, which deals with the modern uh, invention, the physics of 20th century and later uh, is called modern physics. And very small and very big objects, energy, et cetera, can be explained with this modern physics. Especially nature of light, relativity, quantum physics, and atomic physics also can be explained with the modern physics. So this is the actually basic difference between classical physics and modern physics. So this is the part, second part of modern physics. And in, in our previous lectures, we have explained about our, the uh, relativity part. So the classification of physics as of the function of matter size, uh, we must know the speed of light, uh, 3 into 10 to the power eta, 8 meter per second, and which is compared to the velocity of light. Now, if we compare with the other objects of size for larger than 10 to the power minus 9 meter or near or less than 10 to the power minus 9 meter. Actually, we are talking about the uh, atomic theory. So there are classical mechanics and relativistic mechanics, quantum mechanics and quantum field theory. So this is the part of and size of quantum mechanics and quantum theory, very, very less in size. But in classical mechanics and relativistic mechanics also can be explained with the speed of light. So uh, modern physics, uh, the velocity of any objects will be equal to the velocity of light. So at the end of 19th century, we must know about this scientist. It was thought that all the laws of physics are known. But uh, Newton's mechanics, Maxwell's electricity and magnetism, thermodynamics, optics, and motion of the all planets by Kepler. But Newton's law are insufficient to explain atomic level of phenomena. This is why it, after 1897, Thomson discovered the electron. You must know. So orbiting electron, and that means accelerating charge, Accelerating charges or emitting electromagnetic waves which loss energy. This is why, according to classical physics, the electron must emit a continuous radiation and must fall on the nucleus in a spiral way. That means atom collapse, a higher would be no matter and the universe. This is why classical physics cannot explain many things. This is why we need to take help of modern physics. So birth of modern physics, you must know these two famous scientists uh, who, who are considered to be the father of modern physics, 
the era of modern physics first started with the Max Planck, a famous scientist, Max Planck. In 1900, Max Planck discovery of the rule of energy quantization in black body radiation. And, but after five years, 1905, 1905, Einstein's give a, a modern part of modern physics, especially the theory of, special theory of relativity. So the both the father of modern physics. And this is the an international conference. Uh, are, uh, so are, they are the great contributor of modern physics. You must know about their name. So you must know Maxwell's four equations, uh, which gives the main phenomena for modern physics, the electric field, magnetic field, and the propagation direction of all perpendicular. So Maxwell's give light is in a waveform which value is 3 to 10 to the power 8 meter per second. It is the speed of light. So according to this formula, an object with mass cannot travel at light speed. So according to uh, this Maxwell's formula, uh, we cannot explain the velocity of any object uh, with the with compared to the speed of light. That means any objects cannot be uh, gained, cannot gain the speed of light. That means uh, 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So Young's double slit experiment from this experiment, uh, we, we, have, we have known that light is actually a wave. So most of the waves need a medium to propagation in, you must know and electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular. Their direction is perpendicular to each other. So after Michelson Morley's experiment tried to measure the Earth's velocity with respect to ether. Okay? So ether was thought to be the medium that fills all the space and light travels in. And from this thought, Einstein's special theory of relativity comes. We have explained this in our previous lecture. So I am skipping this. So you must know a black body is a theoretical body which absorbs all colors when it is cold. It is a hypothetical object which is perfect observed over the wavelength. All objects with temperature above the absolute value, that means zero de degree Kelvin to 200, 73.15 degrees centigrade emit energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. So at a constant temperature, black body also emits electromagnetic radiation. So black bodies are interesting because their optical properties are independent of the material and only depends on the temperature. So you must know a star, sun is also a star and there are many stars in our galaxy you must know 100 billion star in our galaxy, which is called Milky Way. But there are 100 billion galaxies in our whole universe. So this is a big, big and big universe. So stars can be thought as a black bodies and their temperature can be determined by looking at their radiation. So in graph wavelength is the you know, x-axis and flux, magnetic flux will be in y-axis. So blue star, very peaked, and yellow star, medium, and red star, very flattened, okay? For, for 18,000 Kelvin, and this is the 8,000 Kelvin, and this is the 4,000 Kelvin. So this is the properties of actually black body radiator. Now, you must know what's electromagnetic spectrum. So, so this is the actually a formula for finding this, the intensity of uh, and plot of black body spectrum. So this is the Max Planck found the solution to 
get the uh, the value of max Planck's constant defined. You must know six point six two six zero seven zero one five into ten to the power minus thirty four joule second. So this is the wavelength and radiation intensity Planck. So experiment proved this. This experiment was done by Planck. So classical classical physics is not valid for the black body because photograph taken in dimmer light look greener showing that light is moid of photon okay must know very very dim very dim and dim so very very bright this this is done for only for photon so in 18 187 hertz when ultraviolet light shines on two metal electrodes with a voltage applied across them the light changes to the voltage so production and conception of electromagnetic wave this is an experiment uh, done by hertz sparks created when ultraviolet light was used were stronger than when visible light was used in 1902 philip leonard demonstrated that electrically charged particles are liberated from a metal surface when it is illuminated. So the kinetic energy of electrons emitted increased with the frequency of radiation. Actually from this concept, the formulation of modern part uh, by Einstein in 1905. So this is the more uh, background work for Einstein. So light on a metal surface, electrons may fly out from the surface and emitted electron called is photoelectron. So this is the main concept for photoelectron, photoelectron based on the wave model of light light amplitudes increases with the frequency increases okay so light amplitude increases when kinetic energy of emitted photoelectrons increases and frequency increases when measured current increases but experiment results said that increasing light amplitudes implies increase the current so if the amplitudes of light increase increase then current increases and increasing frequency kinetic energy increases this is the metal plate and electron emitting okay when light light falls on this okay this is the figure so, and it occurs when uh, the light exceed a their shoulder frequency that means color is impro important so einstein proposed that light behaved like a stream of particles called photon with an energy of what equals to a is neo okay so E is the here actually energy and H is the Planck constant and nu is also the velocity of light. So this uh, cannot, uh, the actually photoelectric cannot be explained by the classical electromagnetic theory. This is why another part of modern physics must be needed to explain this. So this is why Einstein thought about this. And photoelectrical effect was discovered by the Einstein. So in Einstein, Einstein's theory of light, uh, we, we must know about this photon equals to A is nu. Okay, this is the photoelectric effect. Uh, 700. 1.77 electric volt and there is no electron but 550 or uh, 2.25 electric volt and maximum maximum velocity 2.96 into 10 to the power 5 so this is the main maximum velocity so each particles of light are put put on contain a fixed amount of energy or quantum that depends on the light's frequency. The photon are energy package of light and photons are the quantum of light. 
they have zero mass zero charge and a velocity that is always look like c so energy of photon can be represented as e equals to a is new and this is the planck constant that max planck derived from the from his black body of radiation theory so what happens when the photon had has greater energy than they are should energy required to break an electron from the surface this extra energy turns into the kinetic energy of the electron that means this is the einstein's famous equation of electric photoelectric now the light object electrons ejects electron more light ejects more electrons with the same kinetic energy so w here w is the energy required to bump an electron that means work function if the photon has less energy then w no electron is emitted so this is the concept of photoelectric effect of einstein so we observe that actually foundations for quantum mechanics that means photoelectric effect so some backgrounds imagine heating an iron bar with say an induction heater for example if we give heat to an iron bar so color of heated object when you heat an object it glows the color depends on the temperature you must know about this so there is a hypothesis temperature is a measure of the random kinetic energy of particles that make up a substance so moving electric charges emit electromagnetic wave this is the due to heat of objects so reasonable to expect faster moving charges emit more energy you must know about this this is the experimental way so hypothesis tested with this in uh, this wilhelm ben investigated the relationship between temperature of black body emitted to peak wavelength you must know uh, this is the uh, maximum wavelength measured by him so this is the graph for mix, uh, for white white color we get 600 kelvin 6000 kelvin and uh, and medium will be 4000 and very lower red, for red 3000 kelvin so this is the visible range so this is actually calculated by wilhelm ben now classical physics predicted a much more intense peak than what was actually observed at low wavelength this was called ultraviolet catastrophe okay so this is the quantization of light must be needed so in 1901 uh, max planck proposed a matrix as a solution the assume light comes in tiny tiny but discrete packets of energy which is known as quanta okay and this he, he gives this equation e equals to h f where e is the energy of photon h is the proportionality constant or planck's constant 6.63 into 10 to the power 34 joule second okay and f is the frequency of light so uh, he is the founder of this part actually max planck so also quantized matter that means atoms standing waves on oscillating string so reason to trust the model describe observed black body spectra perfectly and reason to question the model required light to come in chunks how do you explain diffraction how do you explain interference of light diffraction of light and how do you explain polarization of light so this is why now photoelectric effect 
Hertz, 1887, discovered that when you shine a light on a metal surface, it can generate a current. So, and in 1888, Wilhelm Hollowatch discovered that the leaves of a naturally charged electroscope will separate when the plate to the attached to expose ultraviolet leaf. So, this is their experiment. And put a metal plate and an electrode in an evacuated glass tube and measure the current produced when you shine a light on the plate. So if you are especially clever, you can measure how much kinetic energy those electrons have. So put a voltage source in the circuit and switch the direction the current flows. Adjust the voltage until the current drops to zero. That means kinetic energy, maximum kinetic energy equals to E multiply B naught, okay? So where B naught is the amount of energy stop electron. That means verified by emitter called stopping potential. You must know B naught is called also stopping potential. Now, from this one, you can know about the, explore the impact of changing the intensity of light explore the impact of changing the color of light and also explore the impact of changing the type of material and at last explore the impact of changing the voltage of battery. So from, from this experiment and we can analyze, get the analysis also. Stopping potential versus frequency of light. And first figure is current versus intensity, okay? That means ratio of current and intensity are constant. And also stopping potential versus frequency of light is. So from the first figure we analyze intensity and current. But if, if uh, intensity increases and current also increases. But from the second figure, if frequency increases, and stopping potential decreases. Potential and negative, okay? So pattern two, current versus voltage difference. This voltage increases and current also increases. But current versus voltage difference with the more intense light. This is the figure one. So voltage increase, voltage and current increases, then the levels up at a high level and B naught does not change. So nothing, zeros lag time between light hitting surface and current flowing. So energy in waves. In waves, the height more properly, the amplitudes of the wave determine the its energy, okay? That means from wave, we get a height with and determine which determines the energy. You must know this is the real life example uh, of waves. Uh, in waves, the height uh, for more amplitudes and more we get more energy, okay? So current versus, uh, current is proportional to intensity and current levels up with changing voltage difference. That means wave-based explanation we get also for that. So well-defined stopping potential regardless of intensity and more intense, more energy should be harder to stop electrons liberated by more intense light is not. So high intensity red light reasons, no electron and low intensity blue light does, okay? Making sense of photoelectric effect and Einstein's insight now. Planck's addressed ultraviolet catastrophe by hypothesizing that energy is emitted in discrete quanta. But what if energy is only absorbed in discrete amounts? So current proportional to intensity where based explanation will be electrons absorb enough energy from light to be ejected from matter. And particle based explanation will be 
electrons absorb enough energy from light to be ejected from matter. So current levels up with changing voltage difference. An electron requires some minimum amount of energy to be released. So electrons require some minimum amount of energy to be released. So well-defined stopping potential regardless of intensity. And we're based on the explanation. This is the particle based explanation. So blue below certain frequency, no current at all. And if an individual photon at a particular wavelength does not have sufficient energy to release an electron, neither will any number of similar photons. So what we have learned from here, actually some frequencies of light do not have enough energy to liberate electrons. And energy is conserved if light has enough energy to liberate an electron, excess energy makes the electron move faster. So increasing frequency of light increases maximum kinetic energy linearly. Now, this is the main equation of Einstein uh, kinetic energy. So, uh, and we have, we can explain this. Now, first of all, we can, first of all, we have to define what is the photoelectric effect now. Okay, now, what is the photoelectric effect? So, first of all, it's been determined experimentally that when light shines on a metal surface, the surface emits electron. Actually, from our previous slide, we understood that what is the photoelectric effect and what are the definition. So, for example, you can start a current in a circuit just by shining a light on a metal like this, okay? And outgoing electrons for the small wavelength of light, that means incoming photon, emitting electron. So why do you think this happens? Well, we are saying earlier that light is made up of electromagnetic wave, that is the wave scaling energy. So if a wave of light hit the electron in one of the atoms in the matter, it might transfer enough energy to knock the electron out of the of its atom. So for example, light of source, you must uh, coming and light is coming uh, in the photo cell. So there is a, for this, for the emitting of photon, there will produce a current and a voltage also created. So a metal plate P and a small electrode C are placed inside an evacuated glass tube photo cell, which is called Two electrodes are connected to an emitter and a source of EMF. When photo cell is in dark, emitter reads zero. Okay. When light of sufficiently high frequency illuminates the plate, the emitter indicates the current following in the circuit. That means this is the main circuit and this is the photo cell. So, how it works? Imagine that. Electrons ejected from the plate by impining radiation flow across the tube from the plate of the collector C. Okay, that electrons emit when light shines on a metal surface is consistent with electromagnetic wave theory of light. The electric field of electromagnetic wave exert a force on electrons in the metal eject some of the electrons. So for two missive, a material that can exhibit the photoelectric effect and photoelectrons, the ejected electrons, okay? The ejected electrons. So historically, light has sometimes been viewed as a particle rather than wave. Einstein pointed out the wave theory and the photon theory of light give different prediction of the photoelectric effects. Two important properties of light wave are its intensity and its frequency or wavelength. So effect of intensity of and frequency of the light wave on the photoelectrons produces as described on the wave theory of predictions and photon theory of predictions. 
So photon theory of predictions, um, if the light is particle theory predicts, increasing intensity increases the number of electrons, but not energy. Above a minimum energy required to break atomic bond, kinetic energy will increase linearly with frequency. So there is a cut of frequency below which is no, which no electrons will emit at regardless of intensity. Look like as our previous slide. So stopping potential or cut off potential B0 is produced. The negative potential of the plate C at which the photoelectric current becomes zero. Stopping potential is that value of regarding potential difference between two plates, which is just sufficient to have the most energetic photoelectrons emitted. So to determine the maximum kinetic energy from B0, use the conservation of energy. Loss of energy equals to gain of potential. That means maximum kinetic energy equals to into B0. Now, if we draw the photoelectric car by plotting the photoelectric current I versus the acceleration, accelerating voltage B, the graph so obtained as shown below, graph also shows that there is a situation current for different intensities. And even when B equals to zero, is the some photoelectric current I naught. The curve shows that the stopping potential is independent of the intensity of radiation. So this is the following graph, it intens first intensity, second intensity, and third one. So saturation of current I, and this is the electricity increases, and this is the voltage, okay? And this is the B naught loss of voltage negative voltage. So if these curves are plotted for different frequencies, B1 and B2, with the same intensity, the curve shows the behavior as shown. So the saturated current depends upon the intensity and do not frequency. However, the stopping potential becomes more negative from B0, one and first B0 and second B0 with the increase of energy frequency. So from after this plotting, we get constant intensity and saturated current. And this is the first negative voltage. And this is the second one. So this is the voltage and this is the current. In this situation, we get this graph. So other fundamental loss of photoelectric emission, emission, the number of electrons emitted per second, that means photo current is proportional to the intensity of incident light. If frequency of incident radiation is below their should threshold frequency, no photoelectric emission will take place. The maximum velocity or maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons depends on the frequency of radiation, not on intensity. So kinetic energy increases with the increases of frequency. The rate at which the electrons are emitted from a photocathode is independent of the temperature. This shows that photoelectric effect is entirely different from the thermi ionic emission. Emission for a given metal surface, stopping potential is directly proportional to the frequency, but independent of intensity. So, this is the effect of photoelectric effect. Now, work function W naught for the stopping voltage. The minimum amount of energy which is necessary to start photoelectric emission. So, we have to remember that it is a property of material and different materials have different values of work function. Generally elements with the low pot uh, electric potential values have low work function. So such as lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium are the example for that. Now all the photon energy is transferred to the electron and photon ceases to exist. Electrons are held in the metal by attractive force some minimum energy and W naught is required just to get an electron out through the surface. Now, if the kinetic energy, that means K equals to HF, is less than W naught, the photons will not have enough energy to eject any electrons at all. But if the kinetic energy is greater than the stopping work energy, Electrons will eject and energy will be conserved in the process. This will come out from HF equals to KW. So if the less least bound electrons, HF equals to maximum kinetic energy 
plus W naught. So what will be the W naught? You must know W naught is actually work function. Okay. So threshold frequency F naught, the minimum frequency of incident light which can cause photoelectric emission. So for F naught, photoelectric emission will be occur. That means this frequency is just able to eject electron without giving them additional energy. Okay? You have to remember about the F naught. So the particle theory assumes that an electron absorbs a single photon. So plotting the kinetic energy versus frequency, we can Found, find this graph. So this shows clear agreement with the photon theory and not with the wave theory. The maximum kinetic energy of ejected electrons increases linearly with the frequency of incident light. So maximum, maximum kinetic energy equals to SF minus W0. No electrons are emitted if the frequency is less than F0. That means higher F0 is the cutoff frequency. So W0 equals to what will be? is F naught. So the number of photoelectrons depends upon four cases, the nature of material, the frequency of incident radiation, the intensity of incident radiation for two potential difference between the electrons. Now photon theory of light, according to the theory, light is an electromagnetic radiation with the wavelength that is visible to the human eye. A photo is an ele elementary particle that defines the light absor absorbed. According to Einstein, there are three basic or fundamental dimensions to be considered when studying the photon theory of light. So, Einstein opened the new, new era for this modern physics. So, there are three types, intensity, frequency and polarization can be explained with the theory of photoelectric effect. The property of intensity that the light displays is related to the subject's perception of the brightness of the light. So frequency, the property of frequency that is displayed and observed is actually the color of light perceived. Polarization, contrary to the other two, the property of polarization of the light observed is only weakly perceivable under ordinary circumstances. So first to fulfill, but polarization not properly explained. So according to the Albert Einstein's photo theory of light, the intensity of light shining on matter determines the ability of the surface no reflect and deflect the light. It provides for observation the ability of metal surfaces to receive and throughout the light effectively in an intensity that is observed to be stronger than any other ordinary surface material. So Einstein suggested that given success of Planck's theory, light must be emitted as small energy packets. That means energy equals to ASF. A is the Planck constant and F is the frequency of light. So these tiny packets or particles are called photon. Actually, what is photon? Uh, this is the definition of photon. So failure of wave optics in explaining the photoelectric effect. The light is giving its energy to electrons in the atoms of the metal and allowing them to move around producing the currents. Second one, however, not all colors of light affects metal in this way. And third one, no matter how bright a red light you have, it will not produce a current in a metal, but even a very dim blue light will result in a current flow. The problem was this result can't explain if light is thought of as a wave. So this is the failure of wave optics in explaining photoelectric effect. Wave can have any amount of energy you want. Big waves have a lot of energy, small waves have very little. And if light is a wave, then the brightness of light affects the amount of energy. The brighter the light, bigger the wave, the more energy it has. The different color of light are defined by the amount of energy they have. If all false is equal, blue light has more energy than red light with yellow light somewhere in between. 
but this means that if light is a wave a dim blue light would have the same amount of energy as a bright red light so actually this is the description of photoelectric effect and the failure of and Einstein won the Nobel Prize for the photoelectric effect. So not for time mass equation equals time C square. And it is received uh, by, you must know, this is a famous scientist, Max Planck. So this is the famous photoelectric equation of Einstein. Uh, maximum kinetic energy equals to ace F minus pi. So for values of A is F greater than pi, it is true. Where kinetic and maximum kinetic energy, peak energy, uh, which is released by electrons, and this is the Planck constant, which is uh, 6.63 newton to the power minus 34 joule second. And F is the frequency of light uh, in hertz or per second. And pi is the work function matter. We can denote in W also, at least amount of energy required to knock an electron off an atom varies from small to very very small so now we'll try to try to deduct this equation famous equation of einstein uh, for the for uh, for this photoelectric effect einstein got nobel prize in 1905 so this famous equation i am trying to derive now Actually, so maximum kinetic energy, maximum kinetic energy equals to A F minus pi. Okay. So now we'll try to derive this one. So, here is, ASF is the actually maximum energy. You must know maximum kinetic energy, uh, maximum kinetic energy can be found, maximum kinetic energy can be found half m bm squared actually this is from the m is the mass of photon and bm also the velocity of put photon to get this maximum kinetic energy so you must know For any electron, uh, let let the electron emitting at high velocity. So high velocity is the actually Bm I am considering here. And the charge is E. The potential difference. Difference equals to B. B naught. So we can write this highest mbm square can be written as b naught total work done okay total work done by photon this is equation number one 
suppose suppose there is a we can plot a suppose this is the any point there is any point p okay and there is a frequency f okay frequency and this is the initial frequency f not this is the initial frequency f not in this point f not and there is an angle theta and total like ev not total energy and uh, this is the origin ev not along y axis okay maximum emitting energy ev not along y axis okay along y axis now for this if the angle uh, is the at point p the coordinate will be what f minus f not comma e b not okay e b not this is the coordinate at any point p and uh, we are we are considering the motion of photon so tan theta equals to you must know perpendicular by base there is a perpendicular okay perpendicular by base perpendicular means what this is the point p e b not divided by divided by what will be base base will be distance what f minus f not so this is equation number now this tan theta can be taken as the slope tan theta let this tan theta can be considered as the slope or slope and this can be considered as ace okay constant ace constant so this will be always constant so from equation 2 from equation 2 we can write we can write ace equals to e b not divided by f minus f not or e b not equals to a is b minus sorry this will be f minus f not f minus f not So from this or half m b half m half m b m square equals to can be written as a is f minus f out. And this can be written as maximum kinetic energy equals to a f minus a f not therefore maximum kinetic energy can be written as a f minus phi which is the actually einstein photoelectric equation here Phi can be taken as W naught 
we can it can be written at a is f naught also okay and it is called also photoelectric work function okay photoelectric work function so this is our desired einstein's photoelectric equation So from this equation, actually we have observed that the if the light, uh, this is a metal and light is coming on here, okay, from the sun. So suppose an electron emitting, uh, so here, maximum energy equals to zero because this cannot emit it. So at this case, maximum energy will be ASF naught because maximum energy will be zero. This is why pi equals to ASF. That means highest energy will be equals to ASF naught. This equals to actually what? Pi. Understand? Now, if any electron emitted uh, when light coming in my on metal, and for emitting electron, the equals to highest energy what? Equals to ASF. And so maximum energy will be ASF minus ASF naught. And this, for this loss of electron uh, and absorbs energy will be cost. This is why ASF naught will be minus because after emitting, ASF naught will be, uh, that means working function. This phi equals to what? Phi naught equals to ASF naught. This is also working function of electron. So total maximum energy will be ASF minus ASF naught. So from the figure, we also observe that the Einstein's photoelectric equation is valid for any metal. Now we will try to solve example 2.2 .2 of chapter 2 of modern physics, concept of modern physics, Arthur Baser. So now we will try to find put on energy, what will be the uh, actually calculation uh, formula. Formula will be A e equal to ACE F. And this can be written as ACE C divided by lambda. You must know the maximum energy can be, can be written as like this using this formula. And this lambda equals to actually wavelength. So, and A is the Planck constant, and C is the actually velocity of light. So here, for A, A is equals to this can be written as six point six two six six point six two six multiply ten to the power minus thirty four. Zone second, okay. And you must know, you must know is new. So, so we can find the energy, um, energy of a photon by electric bolt. So this is, we can write E equals to, E equals to ASF, this equals to 6.626 into 10 to the power minus, Third foot divided by you must know put on charge 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 uh, zone per electric volt. Okay, electric volt. Electric volt. And this will be F. 
So this can be found also. This equals to we can write this equals to we can write 4.136 into 10 to the power minus 15 F electric volt second. And Zulu Zulu will be Zulu Zulu will be cancer unit. So photon energy E can be written as you must know F equal to F equal to you must know C by lambda. Okay, you can write this form. So this can be written as 4.136 into 10 to the power minus 15 15 divided by lambda multiply 3 into 10 to the power 8 8 meter per second okay but in our example, lambda is given by lambda is given by three fifty nanometer. Three fifty nanometer. Okay. We are given three fifty nanometer. So 350 nanometer means 350 my 10 to the power minus 9 meter. So after putting this value here, lambda, we get multi after multiplication 1.240 into 10 to the power minus 6 electric volt meter divided by 350 multiply 10 to the power 9 meter 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 will be cancelled so we get 3.5 electric volt so we got the energy for the wave lamp 350 nanometer we get this one Now, if the intensity is given by, so this is the actually potential energy. So, if the work function, work function, if the work function is given by 2.2 electric volt, two point two electric volt, if work function. work function if work function is given by work function function is given by pi equals to 2.2 electric volt then we can get the maximum maximum kinetic energy of photon to emit from the matter okay is f minus phi so this is the e equals to asf equals to we got 3.5 electric volt minus minus 2.2 electric volt so we get immediately 1.1.3 electric volt so this will be the final result or the photon
so we can uh, can solve these types of uh, example suppose light shines on a substance with work function one electric volt and if lambda equals to uh, wavelength equal of the photon will be 500 nanometer are electron rejected ejected from the surface can we uh, determine uh, first of first of all we have to find out the energy of photon okay uh, lambda equals to what was given 500 nanometer but in our previous example wavelength was what 350 nanometer so equals to hc by lambda where is the Planck constant is the velocity of light and lambda is the wavelength of the electron so you must know after just putting these values we get 4.0 10 to the power minus 19 joule now energy this energy can be written as uh, we can transform to electric volt unit okay one electric volt unit you must know one point uh, divided by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 so just after calculation we can get 2.5 electric volt now step two find out the maximum uh, maximum kinetic energy to reject ejected from the surface of electron will be you must know this is our calculated energy and this is the actually work function 1.0 but this is greater than zero maximum kinetic energy so yes electrons are ejected so you must know if the maximum kinetic energy is greater than zero then electrons must be ejected so there are another concept compton effect on 1923 scattered light as a lower frequency than incident light okay lambda is the frequency of the light and it's that means of the electron uh, at theta angle it will uh, change the wavelength uh, and pi is another uh, another one work function so recall that the relativistic energy equals to you must know um, energy equals to a, a p c higher massless a massless particle thus the relativistic momentum for a photon will be just our previous uh, example so light uh, con uh, this conserve momentum and energy for electron initially at rest so lambda equals to what will be this one lambda plus h by mc 1 minus cos theta along the base okay cos so h divided by mc equals to lambda c where compton wavelength this is called actually compton wavelength so example how much energy is lost by one mega electric volt photon that is scattered off an electron with an angle it equals to 60 degree in that case equals to a cell a is the Planck constant and f is the frequency uh, so ac by lambda you must know and this is uh, 1.6 into 10 to the minus 13 joule after calculation so lambda equals to 0 0.0012 nanometer and we can find the compton um, compton wavelength so since the wavelength doubled the this actually this is the doubled okay this uh, that means 0 0.5 mega electric volt so one mega electric volt equals to you must know this 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 30 joule so from this concept uh, light also behave as wave so first of all young double slit experiment interference maxwell's equation connection between frequency and wavelength see because you must know this so electromagnetic spectrum so low energy after radiation become high energy so for this is the radio microwave infrared and ultraviolet is gamma ray and high frequency if if low frequency and for low energy and high frequency will be high energy so low wavelength and this short long wavelength for low energy and high energy will be short wavelength so de broglie's in 1923 if light is observed uh, waves of matter so 
de Broglie's, uh, he was a famous scientist, uh, uh, observe another properties of light. If light is observed to have web-like properties, sometimes interference and particle-like properties other times, photoelectric effect, then what about the matter? So what will be the properties will be matter? So de, so de Broglie considered another wavelength of lambda is divided by mb. So m is the actually mass of electron and for example, if lambda is an electron moving, uh, what is lambda for an electron moving at 0 0.01 times velocity of light? In that case, lambda equals to will be 6.6, 6 uh, just using this equation, 6.6, .6, you turn to the minus 34 joule second divided by mass of electron multiply velocity of sorry wavelength of the electron so we get lambda equals to that means 0 0.44 nanometer so as a spectral analysis so after the identification of chemical substance by its unique spectra lines of shape founder and the value of a spectral analysis so we now we will try to understand about the de Broglie's wave we can solve uh, another example like this, just uh, using the Einstein's photoelectric equation. What is the wavelength of in a nanometer of orange light, which has a frequency of 4.80 into 10 to the power 14 per second? Just using C equals to lambda B, uh, where B is the frequency of, web, uh, of the light. So lambda equals to C by B, just using this one, we can write this one, okay? So very easy. What is the maximum kinetic energy of electron emitted from a zinc surface if the error stopped by a 16 Newton per, uh, per so uniform electric field over a distance of 3.0 centimeter? So first, calculated the voltage equals to V by D, then second maximum energy will be this. So what is the their threshold frequency, threshold frequency of a material with a work function of 10 electric volt? What will be? You must know W or pi equals to F naught. So this is the work function and F naught equals to W by H, just using this. Very easy, easy one example. So another example in the Compton scattering an experiment in incident X-ray have frequency of 10 to the power 20 hertz in a certain angle of the outgoing X-ray, a frequency of 18 to 10 to the power 19 hertz, find the energy of the, this. just using same equation, we get the energy. Similarly, these are the some example we can find out. 